Moses' story uh, and his birth and his uh, early childhood, uh, I think, formed who he was and how he saw the world. Moses was born, uh, the Israelites were growing in number, uh, the Egyptians feared this, and so he was, as you might know, uh, by his mother, hidden in a basket and placed in the reeds in the River Nile, and uh, his, he was found by the Pharaoh's daughter and then grows up with the uh, Egyptians. Suggest Pharaoh was very nervous that his adopted grandson uh, might try to rebel against him. And so there was always this tension that was going on on the one hand. At the same time, his sister and mother had arranged it that his mother would be his caretaker when he was brought up. So he had this simultaneous understanding of himself. He was part of the, of the Egyptian world and yet part of the Hebrew world, the Jewish world, and that had to impact him uh, and how he understood uh, the world around him. Moses became a religious man in the story where he hears God speaking to him through the burning bush, which is also a moment in which he was very frightened, but it's when he accepts his role kind of as he becomes seen in many traditions later as the greatest prophet. And so I think at that point he becomes almost a, for lack of a better word, servant of God in that moment. Um, I think up until that time he probably doesn't really have any idea of God as either we know God now or understand or the Jewish people of the time who was raised in Egypt and Egyptian gods, but I think at that moment changed. I would think when he became a religious person, or when, when it was, um, when it became alive or, or real to him, was when he was called by God. And so Moses has this experience of the burning bush, um, where he's out and he's in, sort of in the wilderness, and he sees this bush that's on fire, the not being consumed, and he goes over to it. And while there, he hears the voice of God, and God, um, that moment I would say really solidifies for Moses uh, his calling, his identity as a person of faith. And his mission, which is to go um, and, and to be, once it's a prophet for the people, um, to lead them back to God, uh, to give them the law eventually, um, to help them um, restore their relationship to, to their father. In the middle of the night, Moses took all the Israelites to the Red Sea. He, then, he there split the Red Sea, letting the Israelites cross the Red Sea. After that, he shut the Red Sea using God's powers again, killing all the Egyptians and freeing the Israelites from slavery. When the Egyptians enslaved the Israelites, they began to assimilate the Hebrew women by forcing them to marry Egyptian males so that over time, the Jewish faith would die out in the Middle East. Because Moses was raised as an Egyptian and as a prince, he gained the strength, courage, and overall ability to overthrow the evil pharaohs and save the Israelites from slavery. The Ten Plagues are punishments on the pharaohs from not freeing the Israelites from slavery. The first plague was blood. When Pharaoh persisted in his refusal to liberate the children of Israel, Moses and Aaron warned him that God would punish both, of, both him and his people. First, the waters of the land of Egypt were to be turned into blood. Moses walked with Aaron to the brink of the river. There, Aaron raised his staff, struck the water, and converted them into streams of blood. All people of Egypt and, and the king himself beheld this miracle. They saw the fish die as the blood flowed over the land, and they turned with disgust from, from the offensive smell of the sacred river. It was impossible for them to drink the water of the Nile, far famed for its delicious taste, and they tried to dig deep into the ground for water. Unfortunately for the Egyptians, not only the floods of the Nile, but all the waters of Egypt, wherever they were, turned into blood. The fish died in the rivers and lakes, 
and for a whole week, man and beast suffered horrible thirst. Yet the pharaoh would not give in. The second plague was frogs. After due warning, the second plague came to Egypt. Aaron stretched forth his hands and o hands over the waters of Egypt, and the frogs sw swam forth. They covered every inch of the land and entered every house and bedroom. Wherever an Egyptian turned, whatever he touched, he found there to be a slimy body of a frog. Now Pharaoh became frightened, and he asked Moses and Aaron to pray to God to remove the nuisance, promising that he would liberate the Jewish people at once. But as soon as the frogs disappeared, he broke his promise and refused to let the children of Israel go. The third plague was bugs. Then God ordered Aaron to strike the dust of the earth with his staff, and no sooner did he so than all the Egyptian Egypt bugs crawled forth from the dust to cover the land. Man and beast suffered untold misery from this terrible plague, although Pharaoh's aides pointed out that this surely was God's punish punishment. Who was to participate in the worship of the Israelites? When they told him that everyone without exception, young and old, men and women, and animals were to go, Pharaoh suggested that only the men should go, and that the women and children, as well as their possessions, should remain in Egypt. Moses and Aaron would not accept this offer. The Pharaoh became angry and ordered them to leave his palace. Before leaving, Moses warned him of a new and untold suffering. But the Pharaoh remained at and even though his advisors advised against further resistance. As soon as Moses left the palace, he raised his arms toward the heavens, and east wind brought swarms of locusts to e into Egypt, covering the sun and devouring everything green that had escaped the hail and previous plagues. The ninth plague was darkness. For several days, all of Egypt was enveloped in a thick and impenetrable veil of darkness, which extinguished all lights kindled. The Egyptians were gripped with fear and remained glued to their places wherever they stood or sat. Only in Goshen, where the children of Israel dwelt, there was light. But not all the Jews were saved from this plague. There are few who wanted to be regarded as Egyptian rather than a member of the Hebrew race, and who tried, therefore, to imitate the Egyptians in everything, or as we call it, to assimilate themselves. They did not want to leave Egypt. These people died during the days of darkness. The tenth plague was death of the firstborn son. Midnight of the fourteenth to the fifteenth of Nisan came and God struck all firstborn in the land of Egypt. From the firstborn of King Pharaoh down to the firstborn of a captive in the dungeon and all the firstborn of the cattle, exactly as Moses had warned. There was a loud and bitter wail in each house. A loved one lay fatally stricken. Then the Pharaoh calls for Moses and Aaron during that very night and said to them, Arise! Go out from among my people, both you and the children of Israel, and go, serve the Lord as you have said, and take your flocks and your herds as you have said, and go, and bless me also. At last, then, the pride of the stubborn king was broken.